Papa with us this morning. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Eva. I have my co-host with me this morning. Hello, Eva. <laughs> She's looking at the camera. She doesn't know where to look. Where do I look here? <laughs> hey, good morning. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, it's Friday, July. What day is it today? Let's see if we get this right. July 12th. <laughs> Okay, Friday, July 12, and the gospel for today's Mass comes from St. Matthew, chapter 10, verses 16 to 23. Okay, remember how, uh, what, were, what were we reading in the past days, for the gospel of the past days? We were reading about the commissioning of the apostles, right? First, the naming of the apostles, all 12 of them. And then yesterday, we, we, we uh, read about how Jesus gave them instructions about what to bring and what not to bring and you know what to do right today our lord gives them the disciples some warning some warning and what does he say behold i am send, sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves so be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves but beware of men for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues, and you will be led before governors and kings for my sake, as a witness before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about what you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given that at that moment what you are to say. For it will not be you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Okay, here, and uh, the, the uh, gospel continues, right? But we'll stop right there, because I think that's warning enough for all of us. What is our Lord meaning to tell us through this gospel? Remember how in another gospel, he says, well, uh, no master, no, no servant is above his master, right? If they will persecute me, they will persecute you. Okay? So if they, if they uh, gave Jesus a hard time and in fact, uh, in fact um, you know, condemned him to death, well, he's saying that we also may suffer similar fate. In fact, the apostles, all of them, practically died as martyrs with the exception of St. John. Right? So all of them went all the way to the extent of being martyred for their faith. And all to, through this day, all through all of these decades and centuries, up to today, in our present day, we experience this very prophetic words of our Lord. And we don't need to be looking too far out. Um, uh, we, we see it all the time in the news, right? How many Christians are being killed in, in Muslim countries up to very recently? Okay? Um, Christians are being persecuted all over the world up to now. Uh, I don't want to sound political and be political, but this is the reality even in the United States, <clears throat> right? Look at what happened with Obamacare, see? Where religious persecution was obvious, with, with nuns being brought to court just because they don't want to comply with the, uh, the very anti-life provisions of Obamacare. Okay? Uh, with abortion surging like anything around us and we who are defending life are the bad guys we are the ones who appear to be the bad guys right uh, just because we are fighting all of these anti-life um, uh, tendencies and policies around us see? Um, and perhaps you don't even have to look that far out uh, we are in, uh, we are experiencing persecution even in our own parish, right? for doing the right thing, for doing what, what needs to be done uh, um, uh, as far as the Holy Eucharist is concerned, as far as the way Mass is being celebrated. See, when we try to educate people and propagate what is true and what is good, we, we reap the opposition of people. We reap persecution. And that is nothing new. It happened to our Lord. 
It happened to the apostles. It happened to all peoples of all races and colors who identify themselves as Christian and disciples of Jesus Christ. And it will continue to happen to all of us. And it wouldn't be too much of a stretch of the imagination to say that this is going to happen till the end of time. Because this is what our Lord has said. Right? No servant is above his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. And so today our Lord is reminding us of these persecutions in this gospel. And sometimes this persecution, this opposition, is not only coming from people who are uh, diametrically opposed to the Christian point of view or the Christian teaching or the, to Christ's teaching. Sometimes this kind of persecution and opposition even comes from the good people or maybe from the goody-goody people, right? <laughs> from people even within the church who perhaps out of ignorance, out of ignorance, they do not understand what we are trying to do. They do not understand how we are trying to make them realize their mistakes and their and their wrong ways of of expressing their devotion or their lack of it lack of devotion right? to our lord things that may relate to the, to the way mass is being said by some priests to the way that holy communion is being uh, distributed to the way that uh, there's lack of reverence uh, for the holy eucharist in our churches today we have been standing our ground. We have been trying to educate people about the right way of doing things. But we reap all sorts of criticism from the good people, right? From the good people around us. So what does our Lord say? What did our Lord teach us? Our Lord taught us to be charitable. Our Lord taught us to pray for your enemies, right? Pray for those who persecute you. Okay? Pray. Pray for them. Extend charity towards them. Be kind towards them. Because that is the way that we're going to convert them in the end. That is the way that we're going to obtain their, their conversion and, and their enlightenment. We pray that they be enlightened. We pray that they be converted. And that is the way that we're going to overcome Okay? That is the way we're going to overcome. It is not by warring against them that we will win them over. It is by praying for them, by extending charity to them, and by giving them good example. Right? By just showing them, by the testimony of our lives, what a good Christian life is all about. And hopefully, seeing through our example, they will experience a conversion uh, and hopefully uh, stop the persecution. But let us be strong. Let us be prepared. There is one cardinal virtue which we can put in practice. And what is that? Which, which, uh, which uh, those of you who have been confirmed should be uh, putting more into practice. What is that cardinal virtue that has to do with being strong? Huh? Fortitude, right? Fortitude, right? So we have to be strong. We have to be strong for our faith. And those of you who have been confirmed, that is one of the virtues that has been strengthened in you by the grace of the Holy Spirit, right? Fortitude, the virtue of fortitude. Be strong in defending our faith. Be strong for Jesus Christ, right? Okay, folks, we are into the weekend and we are off to Mass today, so hopefully we'll see you next week again with our commentaries in the morning. Say goodbye, Eva. Bye-bye. There, look there. <laughs> what are you looking at? Okay, everybody, have a good day. Bye-bye.